Now to an A News investigation. A well-known children's clothing company with nearly 100 stores across the country is in damage control. Please Mom had its website hacked at the beginning of June, exposing personal and financial customer information. But the company admits it didn't tell its customers until A News reporter Stephen Andrew began asking questions. Stephen joins us now with the exclusive details. Stephen? Eric, we have found private contact information for hundreds of Please Mom customers just through a Google search. Please Mom operates a chain of 93 retail stores from Victoria to Newfoundland, selling clothes for small children and babies. And every time you buy anything in one of their stores, you are bound to hear the same question. And if I can get your email. The company asked the same question on its website. But A News has uncovered confidential customer information the company requires for online transactions, now available for the entire world to see. Names, addresses, emails, telephone numbers, many of them unpublished, no longer private. But that's not all. If you are a Please Mom customer who shopped online before June 3rd, some of your financial information is out there too. The company says its website was hacked. As time progressed, we realized there's contact information as well as some encrypted credit card information. And when I say encrypted, um, it would, what would be uh, appearing on a retail receipt, for example, um, with your credit card information, the last four digits with the rest crossed out. Catherine Anderson likes to window shop in person and online. She used the Please Mom site to buy a gift for a friend. I wasn't sure what to think. I thought it might have been a joke or some sort of hoax. You know, how did this person get my email? Is he really a reporter? Anderson says she was shocked to learn her personal information was on the web only when we sent her an email. My question is, would they have done the right thing and let me know as a customer that my information was compromised if the media hadn't brought that up? Please Mom acknowledges they discovered the breach sometime at the end of June and initially told us that they had notified customers. But today, more than six weeks after they discovered that breach, they acknowledge they've done very little. Unlisted telephone numbers, for instance, really are um, a predator's dream. Uh, it is, and in retrospect, again, we should have taken that measure first and foremost, or in conjunction, or to your point, even subsequent to how we tried to address the breach, or how we have addressed the breach, um, we should have reached out to them, and we regret not doing so uh, at an earlier stage. Uh, I mean, I've been with Please Mom uh, many years, and I feel that we're a very responsible brand, and uh, that's, uh, that's, like I said, in hindsight, it was, it was a miss. After our interview, Please Mum posted a notice about the breach on its website and is now contacting customers. It says it will continue to work to get Google to remove the information from the web. Well, we got some information, but we also talked to our counterparts at the Federal Privacy Commissioner's Office in Ottawa. The Federal Privacy Commissioner tells A News it is now looking at the case, but adds Please Mum is under no legal obligation to notify customers. The Privacy Commissioner says a new law will soon change that. Please Mum says since its site was hacked, it's upgraded security and has been assured its credit card information is secure. The company recommends customers who have concerns about their financial information should call their bank. Now, of course, Eric, we don't want to show people how to get this Please Mom customer information. The company says it is working with Google to get the information off the web, but doesn't appear to be having much luck with that. In a letter to its customers today, Please Mom says it is frustrated that the results are still visible, and the company is telling its customers that, unfortunately, quote, Google does not consider this to be a priority because the information doesn't contain full financial or personal data, like, for instance, your social insurance number, end quote. Eric? Stephen Andrew reporting. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome.